You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Do, 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 do. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with Phil Hose. Hi, Phil. How are you today? Hello, Sammy. Hi. So we're so excited to be talking to you today. And um, the first thing I wanted to chat with you about is, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? Because I know that you don't live here now, but I know you have a deep and long connection with Indiana. Can you tell us all about it? Sure. I spent the first 22 years of my life in Indiana. I was born in South Bend and I lived in Angola and Speedway and then I went to Hanover College for a year and Indiana University the next four years and uh, then when I was 22 I moved to New York City. Wow do you still live in New York City? No I live in Maine. Oh okay cool Maine is so beautiful do you live in like a real lovely nature place? Yes I do I oh. can see the Atlantic Ocean from my window. Well, that sounds pretty glorious. I mean, I feel lucky because, you know, this past weekend, clearly when we when we air this, we'll uh, talk about when this was recorded and everything. But this last weekend was the Indy 500, and I can hear the speedway from my house just barely, but I don't know if that's quite the same as the Atlantic Ocean. I think it's really comparing <laughs> two, two very different things. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So, Phil, tell us a little bit about your work. Um, the book that we've got today on the screen is Addicts, Oscar Robertson and the Basketball Team that Awakened a City. It's just such an amazing book. I feel like it's a really important book, um, but it's not your only book. You've written tons. Can you tell us a little bit about your work? I've written 14 books. Addicts was the 14th. And I started writing uh, books for grownups um, and wrote Two, they were about sports. And then I had two, uh, two daughters, Hannah Hose and Ruby Hose. And I started, you know, getting really interested in, in their, their work, in the schools and so forth. And um, it occurred to me that, that kids were doing just wonderful things, uh, wonderful volunteer projects, um, taking, um, you know, taking chances for, for, um, for good, good things. And I wrote a book um, for kids about uh, all the people that I met in traveling around the world um, who were doing interesting things and, and, uh, and important things. And then after that, I wrote a book about uh, young people in U.S. history because, it, you know, kids, again, have made this major contribution to, to the development of the country and so forth. And uh, nobody had written about it, so I wrote. It took me six years to write that book, and then I wrote a book about uh, birds, uh, an ivory bill record, which uh, was uh, extinct, and I wrote about why it had become extinct, and I wrote a, a book about another bird called the red knot. I, I just love birds. It's a big mm. part of my life, and um, wrote books about sports, and um, I wrote books about civil rights. I wrote a book called Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice, which talked about um, a 15-year-old girl who did what Rosa Parks got famous for in mm -hmm. the city on the same bus system, but she did it a year earlier and she didn't get any credit for it. So wow. we talked, you know, I wrote a book about that. Yeah, that's just fantastic. Of course, I love it that you love birds because, of course, I am a bird. I know that we can't really see each other right now, but I know that you've seen my work in the past, so you know that I'm a bird and I'm excited about birds. <laughs> but I'm also excited about civil rights. Um, and your, your book about Claudette Colvin is such a great read, and it sort of dovetails a bit with your Addicts book. Would you say that the book about Addicts High School, would you say that that's a book about civil rights as well? Absolutely. It, it is. It's about civil rights in Indiana, and it was important to me to write a book, um, Civil Rights, that wasn't set in Mississippi or Louisiana because Jim Crow flew all over the place, mm -hmm. including uh, nor northern states like Indiana. Indiana had a real problem, a real issue with, with uh, racism um, in the 1920s, especially. Um, the Ku Klux Klan attracted uh, many people, and I think one out of every three white males in, in uh, Indiana was a member of the Klan. 
And one of the things that was really interesting and sort of sad for me to investigate my own family and to find that my grandfather, who I loved, who treated so well, was a, a Klansman. And my Aunt Anne told me that the first thing she could ever remember was being carried to a cross burning by, uh, by her father. My, my father remembered cross burnings in, in South Bend where he grew up. And my Aunt Ellen said that she was would sell property, her land out in the country, but she wouldn't sell it to blacks, Jews, or Catholics. So there was a lot of um, racial difficulty and, and really, you know, upsetting to me uh, racial attitudes, you know, when I was born in the state of Indiana. Wow, that is so powerful for you to, to tell us all about that. And Phil, how do you think... Um, I mean, I know that we're living in a in another time of um, racial justice. Let's hope that we get some racial justice out of all of the work that people are doing right now. How do you kind of square your past with how you feel about race and racism now? Well, it, it's a great question because I grew up mainly in Speedway, and Speedway was six miles the door of Dway High School was six miles from the door to Crispus Attucks High School. Mm -hmm. And yet they might as well have been different universes. In all my town of Speedway back in the 50s and 60s, there were 11,000 residents, people who lived in Speedway, but not one black person. Six miles down the road, down 16th Street, there was another school which was all black. All the teachers and all the students were black. And I wondered about it. I wondered how could that be? Why, why was there a school for black people? But I really didn't um, think all that much about it until I got a little bit older. And I got a, um, a chance to write a story about Indiana basketball for Sports Illustrated magazine. And I interviewed Oscar Robertson, who was a great player for Crispus Attucks, a great African-American player. And he agreed to let me interview him and talk to him about that. And we spent the whole afternoon together. And at one point, Oscar said, boy, people really made a big mistake and really made a big mistake by starting Crispus Attucks High School. Oh, and I said, no. what do you mean? What do you mean the Klan? And he said, yeah, the Klan, the Klan started my school. And I'll give me some details. And he said, you're the writer, you're the researcher, you go find out for yourself. So I did. I interviewed lots of people and found out that it was true that in 1927, the doors opened to a, a new high school that had been built to quarantine um, black teachers and black students in, in Indianapolis. And they, they spent, the community was uh, not allowed to play in the famous in basketball tournament. And basically the, the addicts community, which was centered um, around um, well, about where IUPUI is now, mm -hmm. they they spent the next 25 years really trying to win one basketball game <laughs> as the state championship in Indiana, uh, and they did. They they finally did it. But the whole community uh, got together and stayed together and supported that team and supported that coach. And uh, it it was quite a story for me. It, it mattered a lot to me. Oh well, I think it matters a lot. Um... I, you know, you said that they spent 25 years trying to win this game, and they finally did against really crazy odds. And I say that because not only were they playing the other team, they were also kind of playing the re the, the referees, right? Because the, the refs would call um, crazy fouls on players that weren't even on the court. Isn't that something that happened? That's something that happened. Oh, my gosh. To Gardner, he was the – he was he fouled out of the game and he was sitting on the bench, not eligible to go back into the game. And the referee called a foul on him anyway. Oh my goodness! Uh, got, <laughs> so it's just just what you said. It was they they went against incredible odds, and all games were away games. They didn't at Christmas Attucks High School didn't have a gym of their own. The people who built the school didn't uh, expect that they would ever be allowed into the the high school tournament so that they didn't build a gym. Oh so when finally in 1942, Attucks was allowed to play in the state tournament, 
All the games had to be away games, so they never had the court advantage. The odds were spectacularly against them. So this is such a great read. Um, it's a really fast read, I thought. It does have some good illustrations like photographs and um, clippings from newspapers from back then. Did you have a good time doing all of the research on the book? I loved it, in part because I made so many friends. I, I got to, I started this book in 1986, if you can imagine that. That's oh my like goodness. Four years ago. Wow. I, I, I talked to hundreds of people about Christmas Addicts High School. Referees, coaches, cheerleaders, players. I really tried to get a feel for that community. Business leaders, store owners. Um, and I made friends, made friends with people that I still look up when I go to, to uh, Indiana, when I go home to uh, Indiana. That, that was the best part of it. And also just learning about support and story and trying to bring it to life for readers. It was a thrill to do it. Oh, well, I love it. And, you know, all of that hard work paid off. Uh, people know already, but it's so exciting that this book and you have won the Indiana Authors Award um, in the children's category. How did you feel when you found out that your book won? I was overjoyed. I was really thrilled. It means something special to win an award in your own home, your own home state. It's, yeah. uh, it's nice to get recognition for your work in any place, but to, to have people from your home um, honor you in this way, it just made me feel wonderful. Oh, that's so great. Well, Phil, um, my last question before we wrap up is, are you working on anything else right now? Anything that you can share with us? I am. I'm working on a book about a bird. But I get I get superstitious about uh, writing uh, about telling what I'm writing about while I'm in the middle of it. Sammy okay. the toucan is just going to have to wait. That that sounds right. fair. That sounds totally fair. I'm just excited that it's about a bird and that you were able to tell us that much. So that's so thrilling. Well, <laughs> Phil, thank you so much. This has just been a joy to talk to you today. Congratulations again on winning the award. And um, no matter what you write, we're certainly going to get it and we're going to put it in the Indiana Young Readers Center. Um, so thank you again so much. It was great talking to you today. This is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long!